Well, I was inspired by something small and a bit odd, which is the, uh, actually, I've got one here. This, which is the warning message that you find inside one of these, which is a Kinder Surprise Egg. And inside the Kinder Surprise Egg, you'll find a small sheet of paper uh, with a warning to not give the toy to children under three years old because it, they can choke on it. And it's in over 30 languages. And I've never seen such linguistic diversity in such a tiny little place. And I became fascinated by it. And I, over time, I started reaching out to people whose languages weren't included on the sheet of paper and said, can you supply me with another translation? And it kind of snowballed from there. And I and now I've got dozens, dozens of translations. And the book is structured around that, but it also talks more generally about what language is and why we should treasure it. The subject of language is huge, taking us back millennia and spanning the whole range of languages in the world. As you say, you've used the seemingly trivial example of the different translations on the warning label and a kinder surprise egg as your starting point. So how do you go about researching and writing about a topic this sprawling? Well, the thing that I'm most interested in, at least in this book, is the diversity of languages, why there are so many and why, sadly, that number is currently getting lower and lower and lower as languages die or become endangered and why we should treasure linguistic diversity, why it's good for us and why we should celebrate it. The, the other place that I come from is that I'm a sociologist. I'm not actually a, 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 an academic that looks at linguistics, although I know a certain amount about linguistics. So one of the things that I realized in the process of writing this book is that I really love languages that I can't necessarily speak. And I wanted to share that pleasure in not understanding languages with other people to show that you can take an enormous amount of joy in just looking at strange scripts that you can't interpret or listening to sounds that are not part of your own language. And it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a quite a joyful book, or at least I've tried to write quite a joyful book. Uh, to show that language could be a source of joy and that not understanding a language doesn't have to be a problem. The book includes a discussion of Gibraltar's own Yanito dialect with Gibraltarian writer M.G. Sanchez set to speak at the book launch. You've taken an interest in Gibraltar and its multicultural heritage before. What sparked your interest in Yanito and how does your book deal with it? Well, I, I actually speak Spanish. I studied it at school for A-level and my A-level teacher was actually a Gibraltarian. So that was one of the things that first uh, alerted me to, interested me in Gibraltar. And over time, I've got to know the place a little bit better. I've spoken to people there. I've done a little bit of writing about it. But Yanito is one of the things that, that most fascinates me because it's, I have heard it spoken. And even though my Spanish is quite good, and obviously I'm an English speaker, it's quite difficult. <laughs> it's quite difficult. And I love the way that it switched back, back and forward between different words, different ways of expressing things. It's got a sort of freedom to it that I find very attractive. In the book, I have two translations, in fact, into Yanito. One of them is by the writer M.G. Sanchez, who has used Yanito in his books. His books are excellent, by the way. And there's also a contrasting one by someone called Dale Buttigieg, who uh, created something called Yanito Yanito. Now, what he's done is he's created what's known as an orthography for Yanito. He's created a complete systematic writing system for it to try and standardize the language the way you would other sorts of languages. And his approach is very different from, uh, uh, from, Mark, from Mark's uh, approach. And I obviously can't judge which is better. And in fact, I don't think it really matters. Uh, but it shows the different ways in which one can write down or approach the challenge of translating things into Yanito in a way that I thought was really fascinating. What message, if any, would you like people to take from this book? I would like people to know that the fact that some people speak a different language to you is a great thing. And the fact that you don't understand it yourself is a great thing. And that while we're in a very conflictual world, 
uh, the diversity of languages is something to celebrate. Also, one more thing I would say to, I would say to everybody on the line, warning, read and keep, toy not suitable for children under three years, small parts might be swallowed or inhaled, or in Yanito, according to Mark Sanchez anyway, warning, leito and no tire, juguete no suitable para chaveo de menos de tres años, small parts might be swallowed or inhaled, inhaled, sorry.